Okay, let's start the last lecture of the quarter. This is lecture 10-2, Power Calculations and Maximum Power Transfer. This is sections 9.5 to 9.6 in your text. By the conclusion of today's lecture, you should be able to calculate the value of a load impedance from maximum power transfer given an electric circuit. Note we've already done this in prior lectures, but the difference is today we're going to actually calculate the maximum average power absorbed by a load impedance because now we have the tools to be able to do that. Recall that in our earlier discussion of maximum power transfer, some systems depend on being able to transfer the maximum amount of power from the source to the load. We do this with Thevenin and Norton equivalents where we model the circuit as either a voltage source in series with an impedance or a current source in parallel with an impedance because what we're most interested in are the terminal characteristics such as the voltage, current, or power at the load. So maximum power transfer can be applied to circuits operating in the sinusoidal steady state. For these circuits, the maximum average power is transferred to the load when the load impedance is equal to the Thevenin impedance conjugate. It is important not to forget it's the conjugate of the Thevenin impedance. This average power delivered to that load can be found by using the magnitude of IRMS squared times RL, which is a formula we have seen before. An alternate formula that you can use to find the maximum average power is that P max is equal to the magnitude of V Thevenin squared. It's important you understand those vertical bars mean magnitude. Average power is a real number. It is not an imaginary or a complex number. So it's the magnitude of V Thevenin squared divided by 4 RL, and that would be when the V Thevenin has an RMS magnitude, or V Thevenin squared over 8 RL when V Thevenin is given as a magnitude or a peak. So the difference between these two formulas is one is RMS, the other one is magnitude or peak. There are some special cases when there are restrictions on the load impedance, it may not be possible to set it exactly equal to the conjugate of the Thevenin impedance. When this happens, special case one is when the magnitude of ZL can be adjusted but the phase angle cannot, set the magnitude of the load equal to the magnitude of the Thevenin impedance. This is such as when the relationship between the resistance and the reactance is something that's set, but you could increase them both or decrease both at the same time. Special case two, when there are restrictions on the value of RL and XL, adjust XL as close as possible to negative X Thevenin, and then adjust RL as close as possible to the magnitude of R Thevenin squared plus XL plus X Thevenin squared. Okay, let's do a couple of examples. For the following circuit, what is the Thevenin voltage to the left of terminals A and B? We can actually do source transformations on this circuit. The first thing you'll notice is we have a 2 with an angle of 0 degree current source in parallel with an 8 minus J4 impedance. So if I do that source transformation, I'll now have a voltage source, which I will call V1, and the value of V1 is 2 with an angle of 0 degrees times 8 minus J4, which is equal to 17.89 with an angle of negative 26.57 degrees in volts. Notice that these are all magnitudes. We do not have RMS values here. So that's 17.89 with an angle of negative 26.57 degrees. And then in series, we're gonna have the eight ohm resistor, the negative J4 ohm capacitor, and the J10 ohm inductor, which was there before. And here we have a five ohm resistor. Since I'm looking for V Thevenin, which is the open circuit voltage, I'll take the load off. So V Thevenin will be VOC. I'm going to do another source transformation on V1 in series with 8 minus J4 plus J10. So that gives me a current, which is actually going to be I Norton. And now in parallel, I'm going to have 8 minus J4 plus J10 which is eight ohms in series with J6 ohms. And that's going to be in parallel with that five ohm resistor again. And there's terminals A and B. So I Norton is going to be equal to 17.89 with an angle of negative 26.57 degrees divided by 
8 plus j6. So I Norton is equal to 1.79 with an angle of negative 63.43 degrees and the units are amps. 1.79 with an angle of negative 63.43 degrees. So Z Thevenin would be the parallel combination of 8 plus J6 and the 5 ohm resistor. So Z Thevenin is 3.415 plus J 0.732 ohms. So now let's do one more source transformation to get V Thevenin. So we already know that Z Thevenin is going to be 3.415 ohms in series with J 0.732 ohms, which we know is an inductor because it has a positive imaginary value, where V Thevenin is equal to I Norton times Z Thevenin, or 1.79 with an angle of negative 63.43 degrees times 3.415 plus J 0.732 ohms, which is equal to 6.25 with an angle of negative 51 degrees. So we could put that on our circuit, 6.25 with an angle of negative 51 degrees and the units are volts. So Z load, which would be Z Thevenin conjugate, it would be equal to 3.415 minus J 0.732 ohms. So the maximum average transfer would be P max is equal to the magnitude of V Thevenin squared over 8 RL. That's our peak formula. So the magnitude of V Thevenin is 6.25 squared over 8 times. When you have an impedance, the real part is RL. The imaginary part is JXL. So for this example, RL is 3.415 ohms. XL is negative 0.732 ohms. So this is going to be eight times 3.415, which is 1.43 watts. So let's look at one more example. So to find the Thevenin voltage, this one has a dependent source. So we find a, want to find Z Thevenin, we'll do the test source method. But since V Thevenin is just the open circuit voltage, if I remove that load, this node would be V Thevenin, this would be ground, and this node is V naught. So let's use the node voltage method. So KCL at V naught is V naught minus 12 over one plus V naught over J plus V naught minus V Thevenin over negative J. KCL at V Thevenin would be V Thevenin minus V naught over negative J. And that equals 2 V naught. So we have two equations and two unknowns. So when I solve, we'll have V Thevenin is equal to 18.974 with an angle of 71.57 degrees and the units are volts. So to solve for Z Thevenin, we're going to do the test source method. So I'm gonna short out the voltage source, which leaves the one ohm resistor. Then I have the inductor J ohms with V naught across it. I have the negative J ohm capacitor, and I still have the two V naught voltage control current source here. And now I can either put a test voltage source or a tech test current source. I'm going to put a voltage source. V test equals one volt. And then I'm looking for I test where Z Thevenin will equal V test over I test. So if I do the node voltage method again, this node is still V naught. This is ground. And now notice this node is one volt. So by making that selection of using a voltage source, I have one equation. So I have V naught over one plus V naught over J plus V naught minus one over negative J equals zero. So V naught is equal to one with an angle of 90 degrees. 
And I test can be done at that node, and I would have I test plus two V naught equals one minus V naught over negative J. So I can solve that and have I test equals 1.414 with an angle of negative 45 degrees. And the units are amps. So Z thevenin is equal to one over 1.414 with an angle of negative 45 degrees, which in rectangular form is 0 0.5 plus J 0 0.5 ohms. For maximum power transfer, the load is equal to Z thevenin conjugate, which is 0 0.5 minus J 0 0.5 ohms. And the maximum power transferred would be the magnitude of V thevenin squared over 4RL. Notice that this is RMS voltage, so it would be RMS current. So we use the 4RL in the denominator formula. So the magnitude of V thevenin is 18.974 squared divided by four times 0 0.5. So the maximum power is 180 watts. So this concludes our final lecture of the quarter on maximum power transfer.